Welcome back, everybody. This week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program. Website, information on our website, on the guest on the program, thisweekinamerica.us. As mentioned, Jay Varney Barker, a former CEO, is our guest on the program today. He has an extensive background in business management, land acquisition, development, home building, mortgage financing, real estate investment, construction, all aspects of home ownership. He's the creator of the Home Ownership Sustainability Program, the 21st Century Model for Home Ownership, and an excellent new book called New Rules of Home Ownership for the 21st Century. Jay Varney Barker, our guest in the program. Varney, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. Well, I'm glad to be with you today, Ray. Thank you so much for having me. Well, it's so fascinating. You had a great career going, and like so many people, got nailed when the economy went south. I mean, I mentioned in the beginning, times were really tough for you. You bounced back and decided, okay, I'm rather than look back and regret it, I'm going to use this uh, to go forward. I, it's my challenge to prevent other people from going through the same problem. And you really have come up with a, a very comprehensive guide for home ownership. How difficult was it for you, first of all, going through that period, and then we'll talk about everything in the book? Well, you know, you know, uh, Rake, it was a very, very trying time, not only for me, but my entire family. Yes. I mean, imagine... Just imagine, you know, having everything going your way one day, and then suddenly the bottom falls out. But not only do you find yourself, you know, going through difficult periods in time, but it's, it, is, it is abrupt. I mean, you lose everything, and you find yourself homeless. There's a tendency, I believe, for one to begin to, you know, to, to find destructive means to find solutions to, that, to those kinds of situations. But what I did, as opposed to finding destructive means, I began to write. And I wrote, and I wrote, and when I concluded uh, writing, I had approximately 1,500 ma- uh, pages of manuscript. I showed it to a couple of friends. They suggested, well, Vani, you have a book. Took it to the publisher. He definitely agreed that we had not only a book, but we had three books in one. And, and, and so we were able to create, other than despair, out of my own sense of, of just frustration and homelessness, emerged, you know, the series now that we're talking about, which is New Rules of Home Ownership for the 21st Century and other two books. It was extremely painful, but thank God we're able to overcome that situation by providing now a constructive mechanism that individuals can utilize now to, to solve the home ownership crisis that we're faced with. Well, you can't put the book down because there is so much valuable information there. It really is a financial guide using your home into a, a wealth-creating asset. We will talk about that in the program. One of the things, and by the way, the book is available, New Rules for Home Ownership for the 21st Century. Go to our website, log on to, uh, to Varney's website, and his website is very simple, J Varney. B is in Victor, A-R-N-I-E, Barker.com. Information on, uh, on, on Varney and all he's got going, and you can order the book at the website as well. You mentioned that 60% of all Americans will lose their homes in the next five years. That's a staggering statistic. You have some strategies, and let's talk about a couple of those, where people can basically make themselves foreclosure-proof. What should people be doing now so they don't lose their home within the next five years? One of the key things that individuals need to do is to assess, and I know this might be, you know, a, a very simplistic statement, but you need to assess your income or your earning strategy. That's number one. Ninety-five percent of individuals who lose homes to foreclosure actually have an income deficiency, and that's why in the book we we say that income is critical. Now remember that I'm utilizing the word income and not a job. A job is one of the most most uh, undependable aspect of an individual's financial construct. You need an income strategy, value to income strategy, and if you determine there are income insufficiency, then you really need to cure that. And in the book, Rick, what we do, we take individuals through an entire process of not only doing a full income analysis, but then enabling them to utilize many of the, of the income generating strategies that we have to enable them to now build for themselves the kinds of income plan that would actually enable them to keep the home as opposed to having the home subjectable to foreclosure. And there are nine basic reasons why one might even lose a home, and foreclosure is not even one of those. One is not having an estate plan, faulty title work, divorce, common law, marital, living trust, the absence of one, no asset protection plan, the manner in which the title is actually held. Those are all reasons why individuals may lose their home, and it literally would have nothing to do with foreclosure. There is a misnomer out there that home ownership lost basically 
emerges from foreclosure, and that is far from the truth. Foreclosure is a reason, but there are many reasons, as I have enumerated, that individuals would lose their home, and foreclosure might not be one of those. Yes, so a little, at, yeah, well, it's a little frightening as you're going through those. I'm doing a mental checklist, and I'm going vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable. Right. Probably many of us are because we're thinking, basically, the only way we're going to lose the home is foreclosure. you got to make the payments or they come take your home away. And you've right. just listed a number of other very valid reasons why we could possibly lose our home, and it's happening every day. It is happening every day. As a matter of fact, Rick, have a critical, I mean, just typical example, um, a young lady uh, going through an estate, I mean, going through uh, a divorce, and actually thought that, uh, that she, was, she was well protected, but she did not realize that going through, I mean, actually, she was going through her second divorce. It was a second divorce situation, but living with this particular gentleman, he had owned this particular property for X amount of years, and she concluded, well, we're married, I own this, you know, uh, you know this will be considered joint property. And that was not the case. I mean, she had lived with him for 10, 15 years, went through the divorce, she lost all of the investment in that piece of property. Actually, she could not lay claim to it because it was not a part of the marital estate. So it's extremely critical that if you're going through a first, second, third divorce, that ensure that that either becomes a part of the estate or in the case where one is exercising a prenuptial agreement, that there are ways and means that you protect yourself to make certain that if you can reside in a common law situation that you are well protected as far as the home is concerned. But you want to be clear as to whether you have ownership rights or whether you're just cohabitating with someone, you know, without home ownership rights. So it was a very pitiful situation for this particular lady and her children, but that is the reality. She had no claim to that piece of property at all. You're listening to This Week in America. Our website is thisweekinamerica.us. Information there on our guest on the program tonight, who is Jay Varney Barker, author of the book New Rules of Home Ownership for the 21st Century. His website is Jay Varney, and that's V as in Victor, A-R-N-I-E, Barker.com. One of the things when people look back and they go, we probably bought a house we shouldn't have bought. And you go through all these different steps, things that we should do as we're looking into home buying. And a lot of people will be getting back into the market now, uh, looking around for homes. And you say it all starts with, first of all, you go to a financial advisor. And so many people buy a home based on what they're told they qualify for by a bank, a mortgage broker, someone like that. And you're saying, no, 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 no financial advisor is your first step and he's going to lead you to what you really can afford in a home that is absolutely correct there is there is there is a vast distinction between what a financial advisor does versus a real estate agent and actually one of the rules in the book and the first rule in this book is that you never start your home ownership pursuit with a, with a real estate agent you must start with a financial advisor and the reason is very simple real estate I understand the word estate is a part of your estate and really can only be managed, analyzed by one who has some aspect, you know, of, of, of financial planning and or estate planning knowledge. That is not the place for a real estate agent. And I say that unapologetically because the financial planner would enable you to determine or will work with you in determining any pitfalls, any probability of loss, any projected probability of financial difficulties should be able to enable you to analyze that strategically and not just work on your home ownership needs, but the totality of your financial structure. And that's why we say start with a financial advisor. Now, most individuals to whom I speak suggest, well, if you say financial advisor, the costs become prohibitive. No. I'm talking about their mom and pop's financial advisory services, that what I call the kitchen table. You know, come around, sit around the kitchen table, do a quick analysis for you, right. determine what risks. You know, you just don't want to own a home today, but you want to be able to, keep that home over the next 5, 15, 20 years. So a financial advisor at this point in time, and I would see in the, in the foreseeable future, is more important than a real estate agent. That's why that rule is the first rule in the book. Well, something else you talk about, and many people go in and they say, I'm not sure that my credit is good enough. They go to a broker. The broker says, oh, yeah, your credit is fine. You say if you have impaired credit, stay out of the market. That is absolutely correct. Stay out of the market until you have an opportunity, you know, to purchase. Now, there are other things that you can do for home ownership, but not utilize the credit, which is one, which is the determining factor of your of your interest rate. For example, what kind of interest rate you get? Ninety five percent is is, is credit driven. So, if you know that you have impaired credit, then it's not it's not logical when you know that that is going to dramatically affect your interest rate. You you'll be buying you know your home at an astronomical price over time. 
So what we suggest you do while you're working on a credit, there are different mechanisms that you can employ. For example, if you could co-purchase with someone else with better credit, that would be one way to do it. Momentarily, if you needed a house immediately, then look at a lease with the option to purchase. And that is you're buying directly from an individual who would not necessarily consider the credit, giving you sufficient time to repair the credit and then purchase the property later on with your traditional methodology of financing. And the way to do that is that if you have a corporate structure, you know, purchase a home through the corporation if the lenders would do that. So there are ways that you could still own a home without subjecting yourself to a high interest rate as a consequence of poor credit. But if you do have poor credit, I suggest not buying. Utilize one of the methodologies that I just enumerated, giving you sufficient time to repair the credit. The book is called New Rules of Home Ownership for the 21st Century. Our guest is Jay Varney Barker. His website is J Varney, V as in Victor, A R N I E, Barker.com. Information at our website, This Week in America.us. As I was afraid, time is going by way too quickly. A lot of great information in the book. Something else that keeps coming up and people feel pressured into it and they go to, again, a, a broker or a banker and they're all in favor of it. And that's refinancing. When should somebody look at refinancing as a viable option? Only when the refinancing itself benefits you, meaning it enhances your financial structure. But here's, here's what I would actually say in this specific regard. Only refinance to the extent that it enhances your financial condition. If you went to refinance a piece of property, for example, and in the long run it costs you more, then refinancing is prohibitive. If you refinance and you do not have a projected sufficiency of income, do not refinance, do not project any of your mortgage payments on future earnings. Now, there are a tremendous amount of individuals refinancing in today's marketplace and, and going into the processes of, of mortgage remodification. I consider all of those band aiding solutions that would never resolve the problem until there is an income plan to ensure the sufficiency of income, not just for a year, two years, but over the entire tenure or term of that mortgage. So refinancing from my perspective, and based on all the research I've done, should only be conducted if one has the income sufficient enough to sustain that mortgage payment over the life of the mortgage. You see a lot of people who chase refinancing because they can lower the interest, they can lower their payments. You've got a great way to save money, and you use a $200,000 30-year loan at 6% as a perfect example. Uh, you've got strategies in the book, New Rules of Home Ownership for the 21st Century, where you really pay off that mortgage in 3 to 10 years and literally can save yourself tens of thousands of dollars by paying it off early. That is absolutely correct, but not only... Well, not only would you save yourself tens of thousands of dollars, but remember now we take you one step further in the, in the four- to ten-year plan. Once the mortgage is paid off, we begin to encourage you to invest and accelerate your investment. So over the same time of 10, 20 years, or 30 years, you would accumulate a sizable investment portfolio. You know, so it is, you're encouraged to literally pay off that mortgage as quickly as possible. Now, many individuals might say, well, you know, we, in order to pay that mortgage off pretty quickly, we need extra income. Or we need an extra cash flow. Well, that might be true, but we give you ways and means of generating that extra money. There are strategies in the book that would ensure that over say, a period of one year, if you employ some of the, the strategies that we outlined in the book, you will, you'll be enabled to generate from five to ten thousand dollars annually and that's in in conjunction with all of the deductions that were mentioned in the book as well your tax deductions and credit so anyone literally can participate in the process as a matter of fact if you go to the website you would see um, a site um, it's called the homeowner mortgage elimination and that takes you through the entire process of eliminating that mortgage without probably even an extra dime you know, it's really, and we got about a minute left in the program, so fascinating in the book, and we're talking about home ownership and things that you should do, things that you should not do, and it's fascinating mistakes that people make day after day. But the basis of the book, you're talking about the house, the home actually becoming a foundation of building and acquiring lasting wealth. It's a, it's an excellent book, and I, I got about 30 seconds. I want to do this because so many people uh, actually do this. You talk about equity harvesting, and I guess that goes back to where a lot of people thought their homes were ATMs and we kept borrowing against the equity. Uh, in 30 seconds, tell me whether we should do it or not do it. Not do it. It contradicts fundamental principle in the book. The idea is not to harvest the equity. The idea is to pay that mortgage off as quickly as possible. So not do it at all. 
follow the strategies outlined in the book and you begin to realize the benefits. You can learn about the book. You can buy the book. It's very simple at jvarney, V-A-R-N-I-E, barker.com. The book is New Rules of Home Ownership for the 21st Century, Transforming Your Home into a Wealth-Creating Asset. So much more to talk about. We'll have Varney back with us on the program. He's been there. He's studied this. He understands this from both sides. And uh, he'll be back in the program to talk more about it. Any information you want on the book, you can go to uh, Varney's website. Again, jvarneybarker.com. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link up with Varney's website and get that information. Varney, thank you for joining us. We'll have you back in the program. You're listening to This Week in America.